Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Monica Rea, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this super cute ruffly wrap dress. It's a McCall's pattern, which is the 8036, and I did view A, and I absolutely love it. It's super, super comfortable. I did make a couple of adjustments, like adding pockets, and I changed the sleeves. But other than that, this dress is awesome and I will be making another one. Um, the fabric that I'm using is from Mood. So with the fabric choice and the style of the dress, definitely gives me like this cute tropical 50s vibe. And if you're interested in seeing that, then let's check it out. All right, so right away I'm getting started with tracing out all the pattern pieces with some Taylor's chalk and the fabric I'm using is a stretch cotton sateen. It's about a medium, medium light weight. It works really, really well. It's easy to work with. It doesn't fray very much. You have to handle it a lot for it to start fraying. So I really recommend working with this fabric and the print is gorgeous. And here I'm just tracing out the two pieces that I'll need interfacing for, which is the facing. And now onto the front bodice pieces. There is a pleat or a box pleat up at the top shoulder seams. So I'm just sewing that seam here. And then you just open it up and then do a basting stitch across the top to hold it in place. So I'm gonna extend Extend the stitch length all the way up to five. It's the highest this machine will go. And so that's what it'll look like when it's completed. And now onto the back of the bodice where there are two darts, which I marked out here in chalk. And never mind that other little piece I was attempting to draw a straight line by hand. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and start with a little back stitch and go all the way up to the tip of the dart. And then um, we'll run a few stitches off the edge so that it lays flat. And there they both are. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach the shoulder seams and the side seams. And of course, they're French seams. And here's just a view of the outside with the pleat. Okay guys, so we're gonna have to take a brief detour and draft some pockets because this dress didn't come with pockets and I have to have pockets in my dress. So, let's go. All right, so here I'm just gonna draw a 10 inch line and then a three inch line, which this top part's gonna connect to the waist seam. And so what I'm going for is like a general pocket shape, but then I changed my mind and I wanted it to be a little deeper. And I was like, eh, that's kind of ugly. I want to round it out a little bit more. So I decided to go with a nice deep roomy pocket. And I'm just gonna cut out four of those. And of course the ultimate test, how well does my phone fit in the pocket?
Yeah, and I was trying to be cool and glide the scissors and um, yeah, but luckily <laughs> it wasn't disastrous. And for those who may recognize those scissors, they are Singer fabric scissors. However, they have been retired as my fabric scissors because I just, they didn't cut very well. So here they are. Aren't they pretty? Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. So you guys know I love French scenes, but sometimes it does get confusing when it comes to like, is it right sides together, wrong sides together? Do I lay it like this or that? And I'm like... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, no, wait, 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 wait. All right, and now I'm getting ready to attach the pockets onto the skirt panels first. And then we're going to go ahead and press this just so that they're nice and smooth and I'm gonna press the rest of the seam as well. And you'll see like it lays really nice. And the next step is just to go ahead and top stitch this just to hold it all in place and give it a really nice polished look. Which I think this was my favorite part, doing the pockets. It's just, I don't know what it is about pockets and when they're done right. So now in order to do, I'm gonna do a French seam for these pockets, so we're gonna sew it around with wrong sides together. And then we're gonna flip it inside out or back inside and then sew around the pocket again and that will give it the French seam in the pocket so it's finished on the inside and out. And I'm just gonna leave the top piece um, free because that's gonna be closed up within the waist seam. So after this, I just went ahead and pressed the pocket real quick before I stitched around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the side seam as well. And so that's what it's gonna look like moment of truth the phone fits comfortably so now i'm going to start on the ruffles and these are a bunch of strips connected to each other so what i'm doing here first is just uh, doing an overcasting stitch on each of these pieces and then i'm going to sew them together which these were quite a few pieces and they all attach together to make really long strips of fabric which will then be gathered, which you'll see in a minute. So right now I'm just doing the two rows of wide stitching for the gathers and I'm doing that for each individual piece stopping at the seams that I just did. And now that that's complete, it's all prepared for the gathering. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and hem it up 
That way it's just easier to have the hem finish before I start gathering. And now we've got our gathering stitches, we've got a finished hem, and now it's time to gather and make these into some ruffles. Ta-da! Alrighty, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and attach the ruffles on, and it, this skirt is kind of like a U shape, um, so I'm stretching and maneuvering the gathers to make it fit the entire width or the entire edge of the skirt. Which overall I think it fit pretty well. I, it was, you know some, some fat or some, because you know how some patterns it says it's gathered but they're like very wide gathers and sometimes I, I want like ruffle ruffles and this pattern definitely allowed for that. There was a healthy full ruffle in my opinion for, for this top ruffle. And so here I'm just sewing the ruffle onto the skirt. And actually I was really pleased that I had like extra fabric. That was great. Trying to gather it up a little bit more just to make sure that it all fits. So about those ruffles, um, I definitely thought that it was two separate ruffles as far as like when you construct it, you know how you have like a short ruffle and then a longer one? So they kind of like lay on top of each other. This is like, ru the ruffles are like this. And eh, it's not bad. It still kind of has the similar look, but it's not what I was expecting. So I was kind of confused on how to get it to lay it just right, like just how it shows in the picture. So you'll see me trying to finesse that. So I went ahead and attached the bottom ruffle on to the first one, which I mean, it did turn out okay. I feel like it should have been a little bit longer, but it was hard to attach it because it's like, obviously this is gathered fabric, so there's a, a larger area that we need to cover. So I don't know if I did it right, but I did my best. It still looks pretty good though. And now I'm just attaching the skirt onto the bodice. And then right here, this is where we just sew the pocket down. And it's all secured now. Alrighty, and now on to the facing. So I'm just gonna stitch those two pieces together, or three pieces, and now I'm just doing a little overcasting stitch around the outer piece of the facing before I sew it onto the bodice. And there it is. Completed. And I would say sewing machines, if you don't have a an overlocker or a serger, it I think sewing machines, though if you have that feature on there, it does pretty well. And now I'm just gonna 
attach some little ties on the inside of the dress. This ribbon I had from my very, very first dress that I made. Um, so it was actually perfectly 36 inches, which I needed each individual side to be 18. So I had just the right amount. So I went ahead and rolled up the edges of one side and stitched, did a, like three or four back stitches over that. And that's that. So now I did end up adding there um, a little bar and hook closure so that it stayed shut. And now onto the sleeves. So as I mentioned earlier, I did change the sleeves out from the original pattern and opted for some ruffles instead. So now with adding those ruffles on, that leaves the sleeve or the armhole unfinished. So what I did really quickly is to just create some bias tape and to go ahead and sew that on around the armhole so those edges are finished. And now on to the belt or sash. So I'm just gonna sew this edge together. And then press that seam open. And now I'm going to fold it in half and stitch around the perimeter. And now turn it inside out. Here we are. Are you ready for the unveiling? So I feel like with this, it did turn out really cute and overall the look was right, but you see that bottom ruffle, I feel like it should be extended up, you know, all the way up. But nonetheless, it all turned out pretty well, I think. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. What was your favorite part and what would you have changed or done differently? Alrighty, thank you guys so much for joining me. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and of course consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thank you so much for those who have subscribed. I'm so happy that you have. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.